state of this thing. Mate, second gear, skidding a little bit. Wow. It has got a spectacular view in the backdrop. Banana and jam and chocolate spread and banana bagel. Hi, welcome to the channel if you're new here. Welcome back if you've been here before. I'm in a pretty amazing location for this one. I left Leicester about a week ago and I've been heading northwestward through England, just finding spots and hikes and beautiful places to explore. And this one is most definitely one of those. It's one of those places that's at the end of the road, at the end of the map, and there's nothing more. And there literally isn't. Only a mile down the road is all there is. It's a huge nature reserve with a mass amounts of rabbits and birds and even seals down there as well. And then over in the distance, over yonder, I've got the Piel Castle. That's on a little spit of land on an island there, and that's only accessible at low tide. It really is an amazing area, and the reason I've spent a few days just hauling up and exploring it, but today I'm going to be moving more northward into the heart of the Lake District. I've got a hike, which is one of the Wainwrights to try and attempt today, which is going to be a real tough one, and I'm hoping the weather's going to hold out for it. And then thereafter, I'm going to be heading up onto those infamous sketchy single track pass roads into the mountains of the Lake Districts and trying to find a pretty good spot with a view to camp out for the night. First things first though, I need to sort out the car. It's in a little bit of a state and then we need to get ourselves down to Asda up in Barrow and Furnace to pick up a few supplies for tonight. So. on and the stage is set all the supplies are sorted next stop black comb should be about a 45 minute drive and it should be really nice it's going to cut into the heartland of the lake district now so we should get all them green mountainous views fingers crossed the traffic in the roads are not too bad well it looks like we're getting into the heartland of the lake district now a bit strange just coming through a village here called kirby in furness seems like everything around here is called furness i don't quite get it there's a borough on Furness, a borough on Furness, and a Kirby in Furness. It must be popular, but good news is we're about 10 miles from the spot and about 20 minutes drive, so. I'm actually still getting, apart from like the mountains in the, in the foreground, I'm getting little spits of the ocean every now and again as well. We're pretty near the coastline at the minute still. It's not a bad little drive if I'm honest. track roads yet and already these roads are pretty intense pretty narrow tight windy and steep real bumble fluff roads good news we're here though oh, here's a car park nice i was wondering what it was going to be and it looks doable ah the church car park i think there's an honesty box so we'll drop a couple of quid if we can find it game on then the trail and to be honest there's actually three trails to the top of this black comb. There's a circular that stretches about nine miles, which looks a little bit long for today. There's a short one that goes to a place called White Comb and Black Comb, which when I looked into it, everybody that reviewed the trail said to avoid it because the trail's unfollowable through boggy land and such. So, we were left with this one, number three. It's about 4.63 miles, which in itself, doesn't sound too much, but when you consider it's only going up, up, up for 2,200 foot, yeah, it's gonna be hard work going up and hard work on the knees coming down. But if we can manage it, we'll get to tick another Wainwright off the list. If you're not aware of Wainwright, Wainwright was a gentleman that spent most of his life just touring around the Lake District and mapping out routes all over the fells and such and all done written by hand on paper and now those Wainwright routes are infamous for people that come to the Lake District. I'm going to throw on the screen how many they are because I honestly can't remember at the minute but there are at least a couple of hundred and to be honest if you've ever been to the Lake District you can understand why he spent decades doing what he did. It's a fantastic area and today we should be able to hit another one of his Wainwrights so Happy days. And what a great time of year to be doing it as well. Springtime's coming, 
the lambs are in the fields. Yeah, it's, it's just nature in full effect today. And typically with me, we've just started the trail. We already took a wrong turn. This is not the trail, this is somebody's house. Um, we're going that way. Well, I think this is the start of it. From here on in, it's just two miles straight up. But here's a pretty good view and panorama behind me to start with. I was just wondering what Wainwright might have written about this one. I haven't read about it, but I would assume something along the lines of a long hard slog, but with want for giving a magnificent view at its peak. Something along them lines. It was back in the 60s, do you know what I mean? And I've got a feeling it really is gonna be a long hard slog. But hopefully, with spectacular views at the top. Let's go. Oh no, we're in the realms of technical gates as well at the minute. I thought it was just a little latch that lifts up, but you gotta pull ski this thing up. That lifts that up, and then because I'm one-handed, I've got to hoof and derf it with my foot. And there's a mild squeak on that gate. If you're a regular to the series, we do like playing tunes on squeaky gates. I'm not going to do it today. I'm going to hold tight and wait for a big one. But that one's definitely going on the what three words location app. Brilliant. Reason being, it's a bit of a false squeaky gate. You see, someone set it up to be absolutely just a squeaky gate. I mean, it works. I'm happy with it but it's not authentic. Do need a picture of that backdrop though. Oh wow, well, I can confirm it is a long hard slog. And, let me know, some of the sections are like pretty steep. You get into that gradient where you're sort of hiking on your tiptoes to get up. Whew. Yeah, it really is hard work, but it's given a lot with the views, spectacular. I'm a little bit miffed. It's supposed to be blue sky. It's supposed to be clearing now in the afternoon, but Looks like the clouds holding out and as it get closer to the top, it's getting a little bit more windy. So I don't know if we're gonna get views up there, but it's definitely a decent height to be had anyway. Oh wow, this is intense. Just relentless upward and upward and not a single soul around. It's a real eerie place to be as well. <sighs> when I stop for a second, is all I'm hearing is like the wind and birds and wildlife around, nothing more. It's a bit strange and I'm doing something different that I never do because I've not got a pocket that I can put it into. I've put my phone in my backpack. Normally I'm like, every 30 seconds or something, I'm taking it out and checking the trail, see where I am. And this time I'm not, and I'm just sort of boshing the trail non-stop. I think I'm doing quite well. Good time and I'm halfway up. So what we've got to do now is keep moving into the cloud and fog. Well, difficult to see, but after 2,212 feet climbing, yeah, finally at the peak. Wow, I'm gonna have to hunker down behind this wall here. It's a pretty dang window, but pretty good sense of achievement getting up here. We've done it in about an hour and a half, so I've made pretty good time. And I had no idea there was a trig point for a slap and tickle, so. That's always a bonus. I'm not gonna be able to fly the drone up here. It doesn't like fog. And uh, there's moisture in this area as well. So yeah, it's not good flying electric things when there's wet in the air, but. And it's also pretty damn windy. So unfortunately, none of that panoramic view today, but it is a pretty awesome place to be, even with the mist and fog. I've got to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed with the views. We're supposed to have spectacular views down into the ocean towards the Isle of Man and further afield to the Irish Sea. That would have been really nice to see today. And I'm probably gonna come back and do it again at some point on a different route because yeah, that is something to behold that view. But for now, I'm not gonna mess about. The weather's coming in, it's about four o'clock. I think I'm gonna, just gonna start heading back towards the crib. So I'll catch you there. I'm not going to lie, that's a nice sound to hear. The kettle boiling away. Ready for a brew. Pretty good. And <laughs> would you believe it? Look, the sun and the blue skies are coming out. It's even clearing up on top of the hill now, but ah, not to worry. I guess it is what it is. It took me two and a half hours in total, all, all the way up and all the way back down. But I guess it just gives me an excuse to come back another time and 
try and get those views, you know. But more importantly for now, it's five o'clock. I need to start thinking about finding an overnight spot. As I said, we're gonna be heading up this mountainous single track road. I'm glad the fog has cleared. And before I left, I was checking all the spots up there and they look fantastic. I looked briefly, they looked like they all had five stars. So they all looked to go up. As I was coming down the mountain, I've been looking at them again and it looks like none of them have got any reviews, i.e. no one stopped there, and there's no pictures of them. So I can only imagine as we get up there, they're gonna be passing places and you're not gonna be able to stop overnight there. I really hope they're not, and I really hope we can, because I really don't have much backup in terms of where to stop around here. The Lake District, be it that it's a massive open countryside area, there isn't really that friendly for overnight and there's very limited spots. So I guess I get my coffee made, and we'll get over to the first spot. Fingers crossed. <laughs> We're nearly at the pass, but there's a parking spot there. And it's not a bad little view around here. And there's a phone signal. Oh dear, maybe I should take that. Oh my days. Here we go then. And this is us onto the pass or the mountainous roads. And here's the thing. I'm genuinely a little bit wary about this, bringing the car up here. The thing is, it's the Lake Districts. If you don't know about it, there's a few of these like mountainous pass roads that cut through the Lake Districts. And as I said, they're just so single track, steep, windy. Some of them don't have tarmac on them. It can be really precarious. I've been in a situation years ago in Mondeo where I had to back down one of these mountain roads nearly a whole mile because someone was blocking me coming the other way and I was literally wheel spinning trying to get up. So I just don't want to be in that situation situation today in this car. We're about five minutes from the first spot, so let's go. Uh, and already it begins. Look at the state of them. Really winder, really steep, really sketchy. Oi, oi, oi. It's not a nice drive, you know what I mean? It's not quaint. Well, one good sign, and I kind of missed it. It was just past the cattle grid and we had sheep on the trail. Um, basically means once you've gone over a cattle grid if you don't know you're kind of in like a countryside area so this is sort of cattle roaming area and not people <laughs> so more rural and more away from it all and better for overnighting if i'm honest so it's boding well views are looking spectacular well this is a bit random i've just passed a lay-by ish type thing that would have been perfect to park overnight there is however no phone signal but this is the first spot um, not a bad little spot, I've got to be honest. Sheep all around, and definitely legit. You could get away with staying here, no bother. And to be honest, it's not a bad spot, is it? Pretty dang spanking, but it's not got a phone signal. Wow, it has got a spectacular view in the backdrop. Thing is, we've got time. It's five half five, so we've got time to go check out these three other ones and pick which one we like the best, to be honest. So we'll keep moving and we'll do the scoping right. Right, I'm not sure what's going on here. I thought all these spots were on wrong road and now we're taking the left onto some other road. Oh my days, this looks bad as well. Look at the state of this thing. Mate, second gear, skidding a little bit. Jeez, oh jeez. Oh wow, might have drove this road before. I think I remember it. Oh my god, it gets even worse. Oh my days, this is horrific. Oh wow, everything's sliding round in the back. Don't like the sound of that. Oh mate, wow. Yeah, this is fun. Gordon Bennett, I wonder what's broke. Well, as you can hear from the funky beats, we've got a phone signal. And we're coming up supposedly to spot number two on my left here. Uh, literally, right here. Whoa, right here on the right then. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough, nearly missed it. Well, this looks like it might have potential. There's a farmyard at the back, but I'm not too bothered about that. Let's take a quick look. Bit of a boggy patch, not gonna lie. Might wanna keep your toes out of that lot, but it's not a bad view all around, is it? It's a definite potential. I think I'm just going to move to the last one, or the third one. I've heard good reports-ish. It's got one review, so I think we'll check that out next. Oh, damn it. Boggy patch. 
thing is, out of all four of these spots, the last two kind of seem to be the best. The third one especially seemed to have like a decent review with someone who stayed there, I think about two years ago. So I don't know what's going on with these spots. It's part for night. There's normally like reviews from a couple of months ago or a few nights ago and it's Lake District, but it's random. I mean, the doable. I guess we'll find out what this third one's looking like. I've got high hopes for it. It could be the one. Well, this is a bit random. We're coming up to spot number three. It's like right here on the right somewhere. Well, it might be the left. You know what I'm like. Uh, wowza. We don't really get this. Oh, there. There it is. Where that car is. Ha, <laughs> legend. There is, however, one major flaw with this spot. I thought it was a phone signal, and there's not. Wow. What a spot, though. That is an amazing view. I can't deny it. But no phone signal. I can't work it out. I've got bars, but I'm getting nothing. I mean, to be honest, it's not absolutely paramount that they have a phone signal. This spot doesn't feel perfectly flat, though. But, I don't know. I'm intrigued. It's not late yet. I think I want to go check out this fourth spot. Oh. And the phone's just kicked in. Not sure how good that is, though. <laughs> Bit of a tease. Change plan. I'm staying here. This is a legendary spot. The view behind me is fantastic. I do think, however, though, I'm gonna have to do something and I'm gonna have to get the chocks out. Oh no, I've never used them before. This could be fun. I mean, I'm guessing it's pretty simple. I guess I've just gotta like, wedge it under the wheel and then reverse onto it. Oh my goodness. Is it big enough? <laughs> and I guess that one that side as well. Let's go. How do they not slide though? <laughs> oh, I hope I'm doing it by reversing onto them and not having to go forward. I don't really get it. I don't want to like fall off the back of them, eh? Ooh. I think that's it. I think that's all I need. Yeah, I think so. Just one little notch. They look alright, I guess. I've never used them. Um, yeah, brilliant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Need to put all that gubbins back in the front now. <laughs> Brilliant. And wow, what a view. Boom. Excellent. Yeah, I know. They're not the ingredients I bought earlier from Adsa, but I've just got so many bits I need to use up. I think they've only bought that mincemeat today, so that'll last a few days. And yeah, these probably won't. And I thought because I'm doing a fry up, I might do something special as well and do a dessert because I've never done a dessert on the channel and I've got a bit of a funky ish one to try out. So, yeah, let me get the fry up on. You know, when mushrooms are getting to that point where they're a little bit greasy and a little bit sticky, that means they're going off, isn't it? I'm guessing these are at that stage. Oh well. Pretty cool in all honesty. This is remnants of the first time we ever car camped in the Lake District. So I remember, and we parked up on their hard knock pass and I cooked a fry up because I've got no other food in the crib and that was all that was left. And it was going off moldy to be honest. I think it made me ill. But yeah, here we are again, making a fry up. <laughs> and burning the sausages in the Lake District. How are they burning? Ah, oh, darn it. Oh wow, I think I've amazed myself with that one. Look at that. That's scrambled egg in a frying pan. That's amazing. <laughs> Ish. Near as damn it. And a full fry up. Right, I'm going to munch that. And then I'm going to get the chocolatey, munchy goodness on after this. Well, the belly's full and game on with the dessert, you know. I should say as well, this is not something that I've created or come up with. This is from the. Uh, the Ridge Monkey YouTube website or whatever it is, or the YouTube channel. Oh, darn it. Because, let's be honest, I mean, who buys bagels? Nobody buys bagels. Not in the UK anyway, so they're a bit of a rarity. So yeah, if it all goes wrong, I'm not to blame. I thought about mouldy meat, but yeah, this bread's definitely on its way. Oh my days, this is about eight days old, this bread. I'm pretty sure it's out of date a few days ago. Right, I'm going to hold my hands up. This is, this is not great. I mean, the ridge is not the best size for it. You'd probably do with a bit of a bigger one, to be honest. But, yeah, in the go. I'm just going to warm them up and prep. Well, I'm going to slice a banana. 
Wow, you would not believe how difficult it is to get heat for a bagel without burning it. Pretty difficult. And I don't think I passed. I think I failed. Right, why well, it's still got a bit of heat to it. Ha <laughs> ha, ooh, quite a bit. Uh, I don't know which way to do this. Oh, blimey! Oh, oh. Wow, yeah, that's not been opened in a while, has it? Oh, blimey. Oh, this is not easy to spread this stuff. I mean, it'd help if the bagel was super hot, but it's not, is it? You'd be better off microwaving these bagels, I think, rather than trying to do them on the ridge, but oh well. Ridge Monkey says do it this way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, chocolate fest. Oh, God love it. I've got to be honest, when I was thinking of doing this, I thought it was going to be a bit lame. And now I'm doing it. I'm loving it. And then a bit of the old jam on the other side. Strawberry, no less. Yep. Authentic. Right, I'm going to attempt, ha, ah, this is really hot, to put them back one way. Oh, I don't know why. I just think it'll work better. Wow, I can't believe it. This actually looks like it's working. I mean, it also looks like the bottom of them are burning really badly as well, but nope, I think I'm good. Bananas are still cold, but yeah, there's heat. And that is a pretty good looking dessert. Banana and jam and chocolate spread and banana bagel. None too shabby. And I think, to be honest, I'm just going to eat that and I'm going to relax for the night, chill out. I might get a little bit of editing done. I don't think there's any chance whatsoever of getting any bother at all up here. It's just one of those legendary spots where it should just be absolutely pucker all night long. And if I do get a bit of bother, well, I'll turn the camera off, but probably not. And I'll see you in the morning. I'm so sorry with being here. <sighs> Look at that for you. See you in the morning. gotta say it we found some spots to park up at overnight on this trip but this one is probably my favorite what an absolutely insane vista that I've woke up to this morning it's just ridiculous I mean look at the view out the car this morning seriously it looks like I've got like some green screen thing going on it's that amazing <sighs> I'm so stoked Especially because, like I said, you know, the Lake District's so difficult to find spots to park up overnight in, so to find this. And those other ones that we looked at, yeah, really sight. But I think this is probably going to be the best point to end the episode. I've got a big one planned for today. I'm going to be exploring the Lake District area, but not up in the mountains. I'm going to be hitting down towards the coastline, but that's for the next episode. As for now, I really, really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, all the good stuff, hit the like button, subscribe to keep up with the series and definitely hit me in the comments. And as always, you know, you know, take it easy, enjoy the camp, get out there and stay stealthy. All right.